Hey gamers, KK Ache here. We're back with just a quick strap run video. It has been a while since I made a short video. Since whenever I want to make a short video, I end up talking way too much. So I promise you this one is gonna be a really quick one. After finishing my retrospective video, I've been thinking about Sam nonstop and how relevant he is in contributing to the future of Honkai Star Rail. So in this video, let me just be a Sam fanboy and talk about why he is an amazingly designed enemy for Honkai Star Rail. And those who are willing to listen until the end, I thank you for your time. So here are the few reasons. First, let's not fool ourselves. He's just a very cool as an enemy. He's freaking Odysseus from FGO with Kamen Rider moves. When he activates a combustion mode, it seems like he's taking off a cape, an invisible cape, and the whole area becomes a blaze. So freaking sick. It is true when people said that, other than cool playable characters, we also need a cool enemy. Really can't wait for Sam to be playable soon though. Okay, enough with the visuals. Let's talk about the gameplay, which is the second reason why he's an amazingly designed enemy. Gameplay-wise, why do I think he's such a good enemy? Because he makes one particular path to be weak and encourages you to bring the other alternatives. The fact he reduces the healing effect and able to deal tons of damage at a short period of time really makes the abundance units to be less effective and you better go with preservation instead. Which I wish there's some more of, especially a 4 star besides March. I don't think there's any other enemy that is able to do something like this, but maybe in the future, if there's enemy that blocking you from getting buffs or making themselves immune to debuffs, those kind of enemies will really shake up the game. And the third reason why he is such an amazingly designed enemy, this is a follow up of the previous reason, he forces you to strategize which pretty much are the following. A. You can't just bring a health ass team, since you need a team that can sustain, consume skill point fast, offensive skill that is, to get him out of the combustion state fast. So you might not want to bring too many buffers since their skills are not offensive. B. It is pointless to spend too many skill points when Sam is in his normal mode, as his toughness bar is protected. So if there are multiple waves, we have to make sure that our units are in good shape before actually moving to Sam's wave. Because we really need the skill points when he activated his combustion mode in order to sustain ourselves during that period and also to get him out of his combustion mode as soon as possible. I know I'm a better Lunik can make a fast work out of Sam, but not everyone has him. And C, if you manage to get him out of the combustion mode, you do reward it with increased damage dealt on him and also refunding some of your skill points. But if your team is in bad shape, you might need to consider whether you want to spend a little bit skill points on healing or you just want to go all out attacking Sam's while he's taking increased damage. So this three considerations what makes Sam to be a very nicely designed enemy since most of the time you always need to consider your current situation. You have enough skill points in order to safely defeat Sam. Sure, you can brute force the fight, but not everyone has the perfect relics or multiple eidolons of five star characters and also a five star light cone which I would assume only a minority of people actually have those. With Sam, at least for me, it is more enjoyable to actually engage with the enemies rather than beating them with few hits. Except for farming, that is. And the last reason why Sam is actually a very well designed enemy, he is strong but have weakness. He becomes extremely aggressive with his boosted attack and speed during combustion mode, but that also hurts him every time he attacks. I have tried to kill him with just Locha because Sam kills all my other teammates. At that point, I realized his combustion mode doesn't affect Locha self healing, and I can keep just exchanging blows with him while he's also hurting himself every time he attacks. As long as I still have enough skill points for Locha to heal himself. So from this exchange, I realized that even though he's a very strong enemy, but he is also quite fair, as he also takes damage because of his skill. And for that reason, if you wish to, you can just turtle his combustion mode as long as you have enough sustain. 
I can imagine actually a challenge that you need to make up a team that needs to endure Sam's onslaught. You don't have that many preservation units at this point yet, so I don't think this kind of challenge will be coming anytime soon. For all the reasons that I just mentioned, I really think that the Honkai style devs are going in the right direction with their games. Many developers are too focused with playable characters, and they end up neglecting the adversary that these characters need to face. Since at least for me as a gamer, I don't want enemies that exist as a punching bag. I want to be able to think, engage with their mechanics, learn from my mistakes, and eventually feel satisfied beating them with my own effort. Much like how I feel satisfied every time I beat a difficult Elden Ring boss. So good for you Honkai Star Elder Devs. Anyway, thanks for watching. I managed to wrap this video under 10 minutes which is perfect for Strive to Run. I'm thinking to analyze some more enemy design in Honkai Star Rail that actually relevant with how the game is played. So if this particular video has been educational or at least worth listening to you, and you want to hear more about this kind of discussion, do leave a like so other people is able to reach this video as well with the YouTube algorithm. And also, you should press the subscribe button so you will know when the next enemy design analysis video is up. Oh yeah, and also I'm thinking in making a longer video discussing the core element of enemy design for Honkai Star Rail in general which I have briefly touched in my Power Creep video. So do check that video as well to get a little bit of information on why monster design is so important for longevity of Honkai Star Rail when it comes to gameplay. Alright, in the next video, stay sharp gamers.